I think everyone knows why we're here. Uh, I want to just give a little background in terms of the coalition. Will the people of um, the coalition present, that are present here please stand? Because we met and talked last week um, because of our concern and the need, the urgent need and immediate need for jobs. Because we know that jobs is the, the root of most of our social ills that we're suffering from today in terms of crime in terms of education, um, dis dysfunctional families. It all boils down to men and women without work, trying to raise family, raise their kids. So you, you can sit down now, we have more members. You know, and, and that's why we had, that's why we sat down to meet to talk about the need for blue collar jobs. I want to um, introduce my international vice president, William Max Jr., who is here to give you a few words and, and a little background and also in terms of why we're here. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Um, what Kamoko said is very true. We've been after this project now roughly 14 months. We went to the state about June of last year, 2014 with a presentation hoping that we could move this project forward and it wouldn't get stagnant. And <clears throat> what we can see ever since that point, it's been stagnant, it's been roadblock after roadblock, excuses after excuses. But we're here to say no longer than last week, we had a meeting with the coalition and what we did was say, let's move forward with or without the state. Last Thursday, I got an uh, email from Jeffrey Bullock and he basically said that he wants to move forward with us and we agreed we sat down and had a meeting that afternoon Thursday afternoon roughly about three o'clock along with the Diamond State um, Port Director um, Gene Bailey and what came out of that meeting was that they were going to hire Duffield and I said to them I feel comfortable if you hire Paul Richardson back to the ocean, both sides of the river. Do you want the revenue coming into the state of Delaware or do you want to go to Jersey? That's the big question that needs to be answered here because we can work on both sides of the river. And it's a shame when I look at the paper and see what happened down in Dover as far as us getting funded for this project that we asked for $500,000. And I look at what took place and the way the budget was cut up and the way it was done. If you put 10,000 people to work, that solved half of your budget problems. I mean, you put taxpayers to work with a sustaining income, insurance that they can take care of their families. You take a lot of the burden off the state as far as welfare and other things by putting people, I mean black, white, green, I don't care what color you are. It's just not an issue for the deep sea or the ILA in Wilmington it's for the state of Delaware. And that's the message that we're sending. We're gonna go forward, hopefully with the state. If not, we're gonna go forward without the state. And we plan to get this done. Yeah, and just to, to reiterate some other things that Bill spoke to. This project is gonna help construction workers, warehouse workers, longshore workers, truck drivers, all those crafts and all those areas will be needed to build this project and to make this project run and be a success. Also, we, want, we look at this project as being an avenue where our farmers and other farmers, when we bring cargo into boxes and, and un unload them, we can send them back to China or the Middle East or wherever they're from with our farm products. Because one of the main places, 98% of what you look at, what you wear, what you talk on, and all the other stuff comes by boat on a ship to some port in the United States. And a lot of those, and probably like 90% of that comes from China. What does China import? Food, 
soybeans, grain. What do our farmers grow? What's the main crop in Delaware? Soybeans, grain. It's not hard to figure this out. It's not hard to figure this out. That we're talking about a project that's going to be four and a half times what the present port does in terms of work, tonnage, and cargo. Four and a half times what we presently do. We're talking about 1, million, 1 million to 1.5 million TEUs of containers. The TEU is a 20 foot equivalent container. We're talking about building a project at River's Edge that's going to be that large. And that's going to create thousands and thousands of jobs. Look at the handout. Then you'll see in the back where it has the comparison of TEU containers to the kind of work and jobs that come out of that and develop from that. You know, so this is a no-brainer. And it's just puzzling why we're not being flooded with support from our top elected officials. You know, there hasn't been no photo ops like there has been in Philadelphia where we had a photo op because they had a project they was developing in Philadelphia, talking about development where they had their state senators, they had their city council people, they had their U.S. representatives, and a photo op. Same thing with Jersey. We've had no such thing here. We had no such thing here. You know, the question is why? Why would we allow or think of letting an opportunity like this pass us by? We, we dredge to 45 feet so we can get the largest ships on the Delaware River. Right now, we're not moving, and that, those, that 45 feet is meant for the Philadelphia and Jersey. You know, so that's why we are here, because we want some questions answered. And I'm going to turn it over now to Ed Zimney, who is with Paul Rich and Associates, which is one of the top, I mean top, maritime consultant firms in the nation and probably in the world. Ed? I'm uh, just going to open it up to questions. Um, a few very quick slides, just so everybody can get a idea of what the uh, River Edge site is all about. And uh, ask any questions that you may have. You probably have seen this in previous presentations, I know. Kamoko has a handout this morning. But uh, what we're proposing is a greenfield site immediately south of the bridge. And uh, in this illustration here, you can pick out uh, the existing facility, the Don State Port Corporation, and the proximity to the greenfield site that we're proposing. One last piece uh, that we have talked about also is potentially tying in the GM Boxwood facility. We think there's two things that come to fore with that plan. Um, that would make an ideal logistics distribution center. It's what we refer to the third leg of the stool. It's got excellent rail capability and as we all know the rails cannot be replicated these days because of cost and space and land so that translates to competitive advantage which is something that's of real interest to not only the users the ocean carriers but also the shippers the targets the walmarts the home depots those folks as well as delaware's own be a farmer, poultry, or whatever the case. So, last but not least, we've done some conceptual drawings as to how much and um, what it could or should be about operationally. These are only conceptual. Uh, what Bill mentioned, Bill Ash mentioned, is that the next step is uh, to drill down in that process. And he also mentioned that there's been some discussion, recent discussion about the state and Dynasty State Port Corporation uh, working together uh, in pursuing some of that drill down as to what it could potentially mean 
for the state because the last slide, and this is something that um, we've always looked for from the beginning when we were tasked with putting this assignment together, and that is um, that there's a, a set of assets. The idea is not to take away from the existing facility, it's to grow it. It's strategically to put it in position to maintain the jobs and the tax base and everything that's associated with it, but to grow that as well and grow it for the future. And then of course in the middle, that column uh, is the Boxwood site and then eventually tying together uh, the Greenfield site. So there's been some discussion, maybe there's some others like Claymont. Uh, I think in the handout you'll see why there's so much interest from the users of this, potential users of the site and the investors is that heard me say this before a little factoid of the 100% market share that goes between Norfolk and Boston today Delaware accounts for about one and a half percent of that and New York's at about 60 and Hampton Roads is about 20 25 so you're right in the middle of the two bookends and so that's what's attractive and that's why what we worked towards was a public-private partnership where we recognized that the state wouldn't be able to in, in all likelihood construct a state-of-the-art facility but there are private equity and investors that are out there who do this for a living they're very interested if you look in your detailed handout that Kamoko provided you You'll see it's a very, very positive chart that uh, the Port of Wilmington has enjoyed for the last 30 years. And even though it's 1.5%, it's very, very good growth. 1.5% of the total market. It's phenomenal growth. And it's what we think of launching a launch pad to the future. So <clears throat> I think there's, as Bill mentioned, other facilities that are creeping up all over on the river. Uh, you've heard me say this before and I'll say it again, I think there's a little bit of a fiduciary to capitalize on the hard work that many of you in this room put forth with the dredging effort. Um, I think that was a phenomenal piece. It took many years and uh, this is the icing on the cake to that project. This is where you get your return on investment. So with that, I'll just open it up from a technical standpoint, and that's what we're doing here uh, to these original group of stakeholders is providing this tech technical advisory services. So if there's any questions, I know we've made several presentations through the last year, please. Yes, uh, so who has jurisdiction over dredging? Is it the Army Corps? Or? Yes, and- um, looked at it? We've, we've reviewed it in a non-formal basis with the board. Uh, what Bill's talking about potentially is that uh, we would look and review uh, in, in a few weeks in a formal basis with the court. We have a pretty good idea as to what's going to be required. and um, But of course, you need their input. It's part of the process. It's part of that drilling down. Process. Yeah, I mean, that's my question. Sort of, how much of that input has already been there? Are they, uh, you know, on a scale of one to ten? Are they halfway there? Not there at all. In terms, in terms of how far down they go and where. In, in, I'm sorry. In terms of the depth, or well, the depth would be um, consistent with the federal project. So you would have 45 feet plus two or whatever. So they're okay with 45. That's what so we're far. proposing. Yes. So you, it would be consistent with the project. Yes. Uh, how many firsts are you talking about with this expansion? Yeah. Um, so, if you were to look at that picture, <clears throat> the way we conceptualize it in phase one is that there's two berths, um, and those vessels are like six to eight thousand TEU, which are about four times <coughs> bigger 
than what you currently handle at the port. But if you notice um, those boxes that are above it, that's for future expansion where you could get another berth. So it could be three. So depending on how you set it up and how long the cargo is staying at the port, this could be one to two million TEU of, uh, of container traffic. And <laughs> right now you're handling about 400,000 units in the current facility, roughly 350, 400. So when you say one and a half percent of the total market, just so we understand that interprets into roughly two million containers a year, um, the current one and a half percent is against the existing market. I think it's about 16 million. I may be wrong on that. I, I, I know it's in the handout. But if you were to grow that <clears throat> proportionally, and with the growth every year, even through the global crisis, we were having at least two or three percentage points of growth. So that will translate to the two million, and that's below five percent of the available market. And the idea here is not so much to take away from other ports as it is just to be ready to handle it. And I think that's the key strategic review that we provided to the initial stakeholders was that there's the potential and that two million. there's the potential of two million, there's a potential of a growing market, there's a potential of <coughs> private dollars who are willing to invest and that you're going to see um, your competing ports, your other regional ports in the area, develop rapidly. And uh, you all read in here about the three sites in New Jersey. There is a couple of sites in uh, Pennsylvania. And obviously New York, New Jersey is spending all kinds of money, including $3 billion to raise a bridge so that they can continue their market presence. And Norfolk has just spent hundreds of millions in developing their facilities. So it's a, a formula that private dollars find very interesting. And it's infrastructure people that they're pension oriented. They're looking towards growth over a 30 year span. So this is a good thing. Yes? Ed, can you talk a little bit about the recent Boston Consulting Group study and the shift from the West Coast to the East Coast? Yeah, um, so besides what's happening in organic growth on the East Coast, there's been a, a major shift in cargo flow from the West Coast. Historically, Asian freight went to the U.S. West Coast ports, places like San Francisco, Long Beach, Los Angeles, and then they were railed into Chicago, and in many instances were actually railed into places like Delaware. So with the opening and expansion of a larger Panama Canal, compounded with the fact that there's been um, some labor strife and congestion on the ports, there's a massive shift of that cargo. And some folks like ourselves say it could be anywhere between 10 and 50% of that market, in addition to all the growth that's occurring. It's going to shift to the East Coast. And um, the heart of the target is the Midwest, Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland, those manufacturing traditional markets. But Delaware is so uniquely positioned as the closest, besides what you already have in your own state uh, and region, um, that the economists and you know, the theorists all say that uh, he who is strategically positioned between this heartland of cargo, and as it continues its shift from the west coast and grows exponentially, we're not talking four or five percent or two million TEUs, we're talking four or six or eight million TEUs. That kind of seismic uh, alternative and another reason, and uh, you know, the, the West Coast leads the effort in the United States in green movement. Today, it, it costs a shipper, like Walmart, about $700 just in environmental fees to handle that container on the West Coast. Never mind to lift it off the ship or to drive it to the warehouse. Just to pay 
the environmental side. So it's getting very costly, and that's why there's been a lot of printed press from the Boston Consulting Group or whoever. The Wall Street Journal, again, there's another article uh, about the growth that's going to occur on the East Coast port. Yes? Uh, good morning, everyone. I've been to meeting after meeting, and I think we're past the meeting point. I think we're here to talk about how we make the decision to make Delaware better, to make sure that our our port of Wilmington, Delaware, does not become obsolete. You know, if we do like IBM, and I've said this before, Apple came right past them. Now we're, we've waited another year, and Pennsylvania's moving, New Jersey's moving. We're hurting here in Delaware. If you can tell me where we got some other jobs coming in to help the city, the county, the state, you know, raise your hand. This is a great opportunity to expand our port, get additional spin-off jobs right here in the city of Wilmington, the state of Delaware. So we have to make the decision. I'm on board. I raised my hand. I've been raised my hand from day one. The 200000 that I set aside along with my colleagues, Senator Margaret Rose Henry, J.J. Johnson, Ed Zinsky, and the legislators, is not just for the Diamond State Board to make the decision alone. We will be involved in that decision, so I'm going to make that clear. I didn't put that money, we didn't put that money out there for them just to make the decision. So we want to make sure that other people are watching the chicken house because we wouldn't need to be here if they were if they were moving all along and they haven't been doing that. So I'm chairing the task force for the port along with Senator Margaret Rose Henry and we're supported by our colleagues. So um, we need other people to come on board. Any other questions on the technical aspects of the <laughs> concept? <laughs> no, I'm speaking for the state and the OECP and the whole state. There come a time when politics got to get out of things. And right now, it seems like politics is hooked up into this. This is about people. This is about job. This is about our major city here that need jobs, need help. This is about Dover. It's about Georgetown. It's about Seaford. It's about people. It's about tax dollars in Delaware. I went down to the legislature and the senator told me, he said, that Delaware haven't taxed people in 20 years. In 20 years. How can a state work without taxes? How can a state be, be viable without taxes? This job will bring taxes. It will bring gas taxes. It will bring road taxes, it will bring all kinds of taxes. Then it will take people and put to work. Not no $7 jobs, not no $6, $15 jobs. We talk about $20 jobs, $30 up to $40 per person. It's time from the end of the point, Bill, is to get on board. Because we're going to do a report card. Our report card is going to look at every politician and everybody that's playing games and stuff. And we want to give that to the whole 700 and 60,000 people around the state and let them know that if, if, if they don't want to be a part of this, we should have been on board. We should have gave up the money. Right across the bridge, right across the bridge, three miles or two miles from the port, they are going to build a port. And we're going to lose the old DuPont plant to somebody else. Jersey is not playing. So let's put the politics to the side and let's look at the people in this state that need jobs and let's say, go on with this, move with this, or we will pick it, we will do anything we can to let people know that we're for real. Thank you. And it relates to the significance and the importance of the state supporting this effort. I have a dear grandson who, as some other young people uh, experienced, went through some problems and landed himself in some real trouble. And he had to go through a process to um, repay society for what he did. Well, fortunately, there exists a port in the state of Delaware. Uh, in Wilmington. That, fortunately, some wise people many years ago determined that a person such as him could restore himself and get a decent living 
if he took the time to go down to the port or go through the process, get a twig card, um, go to the port, and no matter how many times he would be rejected, stick with it. And that's what he did. And so he was off probation. He went down to the port. He stuck with it day after day, and he got a job. Now, not only did he get hired, but in time, because somebody saw in him what I already knew, and forgive me if I get emotional, because I love him. He's a good kid, and I love him, and I knew his value, unlike some other people, but I knew his value, and he stuck with it, and then somebody said, you know what, in addition to you getting a job because we like you, and we watch you, and we see your commitment to this, we're going to give you a permanent position. And he got a permanent position. So he met a young lady, a lovely young lady, and now he's engaged. In addition to being engaged, he, right, now he was able to put a diamond. Look, I, I, I've been married more than 52 years, and I have a, well, it's, it's working a little bit. But, I have, <laughs> but he was able to put on her finger a sizable little rock because of that job. In addition to which, he now is going with her and they're looking for a house. This is one story of a mother, I'm a grandmother and I'm a great grandmother. And not only is his life uh, moving forward and it has changed tremendously, he comes and he sits down with me and he says, Grandma, I never thought this would happen. And I, I, forgive me, but I never thought that I would have this kind of future in front of me. But Grandma also is relieved because Grandma's been supporting. Grandma's been helping to pay fines. Now some of that weight is off grandma and grandpa who is 80 some years old. So this is a large important issue to understand that lives indeed will change. I cannot for the life of me understand anybody not understanding the difference it will make to the state of Delaware to Build this port, the lives, you know, this is <laughs> politics, look, that's stupid. I mean, it's just sheer insanity to think that anybody can get away with holding this up and thinking they will ever have support, never for me. As long as I live and breathe and as long as I can make an effort. Anybody running for elective office or to comes up and says, well, I support, I really want jobs. Jobs are important. Job, job. Don't come near me. If you don't understand that here's the opportunity, here's the chance. You can say a gift from God or whatever faith you believe in, but it's a gift. I'm a living witness to this gift. And I know the anxiety of not knowing. Just as my grandson did not know his future, even today I'm fearful. I'm fearful about the possibilities of troubles and, 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 and things that would cause additional pain to him or to my family. I don't want to hold this up, but thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. In your slide, uh, in, in your slide uh, presentation, when you show the, uh, the Greenfields and GM on the screen, it shows uh, Newcastle County, but 
and the one you presented to us that doesn't have uh, Newcastle County, is it a reason? Uh, I think someone told us that it's actually not <laughs> Newcastle County, but it's somewhere. And the reason why I'm asking questions is especially when it pertains to GM. Uh, I was under the impression that the county had some interest in the GM site currently because I know, just like you said, it, it's important that we move forward quickly because my understanding, they're using the GM plant now for distribution center for taking garbage from New York to Chester. Yeah, I, I don't know that as a fact. I don't know if that's actually occurring. Um, what was attractive to us was, of course, the rail capability around yeah. it. My concern is that that the company that's using the GM now would be an impediment to us getting the GM plan. And I was wondering, does the county have any interest still in the GM? I'll leave that. Um, we, Dave Bermotti here, and I have been in contact with the owners of GM when we heard that it may be you know, harvested or turned into a development. We uh, put a bid in that froze it. And we, right now, I believe that they're waiting to see what's going to happen. They'd much rather be a distribution center. The value of GM is as a distribution center. It's got 10 rails behind it on every train rail in the country, 495, I-95 on the front end. And we are interested in trying to uh, tie it to the port because, as Ed would tell you, it makes the port like three times its already valuable position. So I think that. We know that the Chinese people don't want to get into a fight between a state and a county. They'd like this to be resolved. And their high best use is uh, part of the port. Thank you. I have a te technical question for Ed. <coughs> Ed, in, in any of your studies so far, uh, is there any indication of how much of the uh, grain market in the Midwest, for instance, in the Chicago area, Illinois, has switched from the barge transport to uh, the containers. I understand that the, they're having problems on the West Coast with these uh, shipments of grain. Uh, all the waterways have problems. They're having trouble with uh, the Mississippi River, uh, Army Corps of Engineer problems, difficulty with EPA, and, it, and the list just goes on and on. It is my understanding that uh, most of your markets in the Chicago, Illinois area, and in the Midwest are switching to containers. Uh, do you have any uh, any indication of that? I, I don't know the exact numbers. I've seen many articles that summarize in a technical fashion just what you're saying. So previously, you know, the container would come from China or Vietnam or Malaysia or wherever, and it would go back empty. And uh, in fact, there's been a very quick to market capability of just what you're explaining. So they use something called a super sack. It goes inside the container. They shoot the grain inside, and then it's loaded for export on, on the outbound. And it has been driven uh, by the fact that the Mississippi River cannot support the barge traffic in a continual fashion because of droughts and things of that nature. So the two have come together. What those actual numbers are, I don't know um, offhand, but it is a presence that everyone has felt in the shipping side of things. I think it's here to stay, just as you mentioned, because uh, transportation always seeks uh, its own level, and that's just what's happened in what you described. So the grain and the farm products on the outbound side, combined with forest products, and even things like scrap wood, it's not just scrap paper, it's little pieces of wood that go and are loaded out in a container. Right. Well, I think the benefit to Delaware agriculture, the biggest benefit for a product is probably going to be our, our finished chickens, our finished product for chickens. But that benefits every farmer in Delaware. The more, more chickens we can export, the more grain and the better prices we can get for the grain. But I think the real benefit for agriculture in the state of Delaware is replacing the jobs that were lost when we lost the Boxwood plant, and when we lost Chrysler, and we lost all these entities. And until we can balance the budget, the state budget on real revenue, there's no money for farmland preservation, there's no money for the Young Farmers and Ranchers program, and 
the, the burden is on the small businesses and the farmers in this state. So what we've got to do is take a look at the big picture, I think, and see what we can do. Now, can you imagine how that first guy that sent that first Wells Fargo stagecoach out of film? <laughs> and look where they are. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Asian markets and all. What about the EU? Is that market? Yeah. It, oh, yeah, that's all. Yeah, though that's all part of it. Uh, that market is a lot more mature, and uh, there's no doubt it's going to play a role. It's just the larger piece is going to be coming from Asia, and uh, that's where all the eyes are uh, for the future as well. But by no means are we discounting the European. Uh, countries. In fact, you're, I mean, you take a direct line across from Delaware and you, you, know, you run into Portugal because that's, it's right across the way. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to play a role. Yes? Uh, I attended a meeting roughly two to three months ago and it involved the old Phoenix steel mill up in Claymont. Now, the way I understood it, the presentation was there was going to be three phases. There was going to be 600,000 square feet of office space, and I can't remember how many square feet of warehousing. And then the way I understood it was the third phase was to put a port in up there at Claymont, and that port would be welcome. The president signed an executive order creating the P3 program, encouraging infrastructure investment in places like ports and he signed it here at the port of Wilmington. The local labor unions were the people who had the idea and saw this parcel of land and told Nikki, the owner of it, your land is the perfect place for this new port. So when the workers are on board, that's 90% of your profit. They're the guys who came up with the idea to say here's how you can solve the problem that you had. So we have the owner here in the room, the union's on board, the president came to the court, said I have the expertise that I'm making available to support anybody who wants to do a project. He sent his unit who's involved with supporting that here. We rode around, did a site visit on the old port and the new location. With their own eyeballs, they determined that the old port couldn't support this new idea. So they've already told the highest ranking federal officials that the new port can't support this new container idea. The space is in the They said they're all on board in supporting us with respect to the new location. They were enthusiastic. And then they ran into a, a roadblock because everybody in the world knows including investors and including federal officials, that if the state government doesn't enthusiastically say to you, we're on board and we've told all our departments to do everything that they can do to support the exploration of this project, then everybody's on hold like saying, okay, how come the state government isn't fully on board? We know the state government has three components. I'm talking about legislative and executive. So when we talk about things to do, we really clearly need our state executive branch government because it appears that the legislative branch has already created a committee. We have two co-chairs who live right in this area. Okay, They're not anti-port people co-chairing this committee for expansion. So we have to be specific in what's needed from people in certain offices. At the, at the federal level, we have a congressman and two U.S. senators. I know what it looks like when your federal elected officials support a project. They provide their written John Hancock letting the federal agencies and the president and that unit that's involved in this and the agencies, the federal agencies that are involved, they let them know, they communicate. We're on board, we would like to see this fully explored, right? 
So I think these are important things that we need to bump this, to get this thing that jumps, that jump that it needs. But right now, we're kind of stuck. So that's my thoughts and comments on it. Thank you. I heard my name mentioned. So I figured I better walk to the microphone. I do have to go for a doctor's appointment. I do appreciate uh, being invited to the meeting. It was a little short notice, so just receiving the thing on Saturday. I just got back from the West Coast from my niece's uh, wedding over the weekend, but I I'm pleased that, that I was able to be here to hear everybody speak. We've talked a lot about the need for the state to be involved, and other than some of the legislators, I know that there's nobody really to hear from the state, although Jeff Bullock's name was mentioned at the outset, and he's an important player in this. But I, I, I think the two important messages today, actually is something that I read in the press release that I think Kamoko sent to me about the, the press conference that happened over in New Jersey. And there were comments from State Senator Steve Sweeney, who, who I had a little run-in with a few years ago at the DRBCBA when he was talking about what Delaware's governor wasn't doing with respect to union labor there at the DRBA. But what Steve said, this took over New Jersey nine years. Everybody hear me? Nine years. Meaning it didn't happen overnight. And what Sweeney said was the biggest impediment was the kind of political infighting and who shot John stuff, who's going to get credit and who wasn't going to get credit on their side of the river, which is why it took so long. And that's why my, my message for all of us today is that if we're going to get some, this done or some other project on the river, and we have to, by the way, Sam called out the congressional delegation. The congressional delegation has spent our time over the last several years securing over a hundred million dollars to dredge that river. See that hash line down the middle of the river? That only gets to 45 feet because of what the delegation has done, working with the delegations in New Jersey and Pennsylvania and the president and his people and the vice president in particular. A hundred million dollars plus. So that's what we've been working on. Now that means all the more that Delaware has to get out on the river. Those who, who know how the, the port works know that the boats come up and go come up to Christina. Well, what's the draft of the Christina? 38 feet. So if you're going to take a, Mr. Pont should know this, but you take a, you're going to take a, a container vessel up, or are you going to get it up the Christina River? No, you want to try. No, you can't. So we need a berth out on the river wherever it's going to be. That's number one. Number two is the best way to do it, the only way to do it, in my opinion, and it's been mentioned by Bill at the outset, is through the state umbrella. First of all, you don't have to create a new corporation. You can do it under the, that umbrella. And to do it in a coordinated way with the existing port so that you can be careful, notwithstanding all the commitments that everybody made, is that you don't negatively impact the current infrastructure and the jobs there. 20 years ago, the state took over the port from the city of Wilmington. The city of Wilmington was in a mess at the time. They had a $13 million note that was due at Wilmington Trust because of their fiscal situation. Now Senator, then Governor Carper was governor, and we used that as an opportunity to, to help the city, to help protect and expand the kind of job, just the kind of jobs that you described. And that was the main reason we did it. And we were able to do it because we were able to get Democrats and Republicans, upstate and downstate, the city and the county, and Kent and Sussex County to support the project and invest tens of millions of dollars, probably over a hundred million dollars by now, in that facility for one reason, to secure the jobs of that family member of yours that were so important. To his life, to your life, and to the broader community. The only way we're going to get up on that river is as if we, all of us, come together as a community. City, county, and state with the federal <coughs> dele delegation to make this happen. That's the only way it's going to happen. This is a $400 million project, I, I saw an estimate. 
four hundred million dollars is more than the state bond bill budget. What if we got bond bill people here, don't we? What's your budget? What's your total? Uh, oh, this is about four million. This is a, it's one project. This is the second biggest project. The only bigger project than this was Route 1 itself, which was a billion dollar project. So it has to be a P3 project. It has to be a public partnership. Nikki's got to be part of it. He's the owner, private investors. And by the way, I grew up in a neighborhood where we used to say, money talks, bullshit walks. Where we need to see these investors. And the only way to see these investors to make this investment on the front end, which dollars I understand are being put together as we speak. Bill, did I hear you say that at the outset? Yes, and, and I would like to comment on that. When you say we tried to get these dollars 14 months ago, and the problem, and everything you're saying is correct, but when we, we need a coalition of our top officers to come together as a group. I, I, I'm, I'm with you there 100%. Okay. Everybody call me on this coalition. I'm in. I'm all in. And, and that's what we want to do. I'm all in. I'm all in. As long as we all, we are all in working together. Thanks. Now, say, Senator, and I want to say, um, there's a couple of things. Uh, it's important to follow on with what John said. There. First of all, this is the kind of project that the state needs to look at for the future. Uh, but let us be clear, this is a project for the future. And John said nine years, and Carney said nine years, I'd say ten. Uh, but, the, but the point is, the first kid that's going to get their first job out of this is probably now sitting about the third grade. But that's the kind of future thinking and planning that we have to do so that those jobs can come about. Now, we have to do a lot more between now and then for those kids that are here now and need jobs. But today we're talking about the report. I want to congratulate Tom Gordon and make sure we clear the air on that because he's the kind of a leader that saw an opportunity and stepped forward. Uh, didn't even have all the detail yet, but said this will be a big deal if we can do it. And it will, if we can do it. So the, the, as far as the state being on board, I think that's beginning to happen. I'm going to tell you some good news. Yeah. Alan Levin is no longer in charge of the court. He's got full of kids. That's a big business. That's a big business. Okay? Got full of understanding. And I think he's going to do what he can. That has moved the governor. The previous head of the, the chair of the board of the port told the governor, this port's a waste, it's an anchor on us. It's not an anchor on us. Not for those thousands of people who have jobs that are good paying jobs, that allow them to raise a family, get their kids educated, maybe have a little extra, like a little place at the shore or a little boat to, to spend weekends on. We've lost the automobile factory. This is one of the last places we have, the Port of Wellington, and to the extent that we can expand it, uh, it is best. I want to talk about the study. Yes, I wish we could have found the full five hundred thousand dollars they asked for for that study. Charles knows. They need to, right, John? We got Charles got. It. But the Joint Finance Committee sent money to the bond committee. We re recommended this. They got two hundred thousand. That shouldn't stop this project. Let me just point out, there's some other parties here that ought to kick in. The local governments ought to kick in. They could easily kick in another 300,000. Well, let's split it in half. If they get from the locals, 150,000. There are private property owners that stand to have it. I know them and I like them and they're good people. But they're going to take a $10 million property and turn it into a $200 million asset. If this project goes forward, I think we could ask them to pitch in a little bit, just a little bit, to get this study done. Because this study is really the next most important thing. Now, Jeff, there's a couple of things that need to be done. We need to know how many yards or, or cubic meters, whatever we use now, of silt has got to be dug out and moved and put somewhere. We have to have a plan for that. Jeff Ross can do that within plus or minus 5% right here, right today. You can do that for us. 
We need to get that done. We need to get this study rolling. And I think we can do it. I think those of us in General Assembly, Charles, Representative Potter, Senator Henry, myself, all the other, uh, to take a go. Jonathan, we're all committed to do whatever we can for this. You have to realize we're strapped. We have a $150 million deficit facing us in the face when we start next year. We'll do what we can. We'll work with you every way we can. But I think you got to get some others involved to get this $500,000 study underway. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Oh, Senator, uh, I just. I'm, Senator, we, we're at the point right now where we need $500,000. $500, get an environmental impact study done. I don't know how long that takes, but I'm sure it's not going to take no 10 years, no three years, it's going to be study about 10 years. Exactly. We're, saying, we're, saying, we're, saying, we're saying that we need that study done now, and we want to see ground, ground growth by the start of the year. We're saying because, you know, we're looking. S S Senator, if, if I may, and Kamoko, I apologize. Is, yeah. But here's what we, we're going to do, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to go forward. It don't take, and that's what I meant when I opened the conversation about Delaware dragging behind. Yeah. It don't take anybody 10 years to get a study done that can be done if you fast track within three to four months. It don't take that long. We don't intend for this project. We're going to do it either with the state on board or without the state. State's on board. Okay. Don't, don't, don't be mistaken. Then we're not going to drag this project out in 10 years. We plan to get this project done within four to five months, and we plan to move forward, get the investors in the room, sit down, and get this going forward. Like the gentleman said from DuPont, it makes no sense for the state of Delaware to drag their feet, either be the General Assembly or whoever it may be, to drag their feet on a project that's going to create thousands of jobs. And we're not just going to sit back and let you continue to do this. We're going to move forward. I'm telling you, I believe you can clearly put down. You go meet with him, I'll go with you. If he drags his feet, Jeff Bullock drags his feet now, beyond what is absolutely reasonable, you you tell me, but I think you're on a different page. Right now. We, we are because we met with Jeff yesterday. Jeff is on board, and like I said at the beginning of this meeting, whether we do it with the state or without the state, we plan, when I say the state, I mean the governor or whoever, we plan to move this project forward. So you're talking about five to six years, that ain't gonna happen. We're gonna do this within a year and have it done. You can start that study tomorrow with the $200,000 you have. You can start that by phasing it in. Start now. We can fast track it and we get my rad on board, and I was aiming to say this to the congressman before he left. At the federal government, you can bypass some of the steps because they were fast tracking, okay. and that's what Delaware's got to wake up to. Also, we have a room here. A guy from the Corps of Engineers. You got anything you want to say? You can listen to this stuff. What, what, I mean, what's up? I mean, everybody's talking about the floor this, the floor that. You got the floor right here. Came here, uh, myself and Charles Myers, who's a uh, project manager for Port of Wilmington, just to listen because we heard a lot of uh, rumors about what was going on, and we just wanted to see where where everything stood. Uh, as far as the core goes, uh, we'll be, we're responsible for the permit for this project. Uh, we have no dog in the fight here. Uh, this is this is a great project from a from a uh, perspective of the core. But uh, we're certainly not responsible for the work that would take place at the port, or even the dredging up to it. We're certainly uh, here to give recommendations and work with uh, Jeff and any of the groups that want to ask us questions about how the dredging would get done, where the material might go. Uh, we have federal areas that right now don't have a whole lot of space in, and I, I think everyone that's moving forward here realizes that. So, uh, from the course perspective, uh, we're we're ready. To, you know, we haven't had any formal conversations with this group or any group. Uh, with respect to this project. So when it's time, uh, just come to us and we're willing to help. We're, we're all on board and uh, we're working closely with the federal legislators on a lot of different things. And I'm sure uh, if this were the next project, uh, we're willing and able. That's, that's about where we stand. Right. Mr. Singer, could you speak to that? <coughs> the Singer Coastal Zone Act has a provision in it that 
forbids heavy industry in the coastal zone. It defines heavy industry as typically bigger than 20 acres. Warehousing, well, what constitutes heavy industry? What constitutes light industry? Warehousing is the light industry. Most of the activity in a port is warehousing. That's light industry. What that means is make the strip 80 feet or 100 feet wide to accommodate the crane. 80 feet from the water's edge, from the bulkhead edge. You can have it two miles long before you get to 20 acres. So it doesn't violate the coastal zone. Now, the argument can be made that split zoning, split zoning, which is what, what uh, that suggests, split zoning was not the practice years ago. It was not recognized. It is indeed a flaw in the Coastal Zone Act that the definition said 20, 20, uh, 20 acres. But okay, that was what was necessary to pass the bill in 1971. That was written because it was a necessity. It was recognized <laughs> okay, that at that time there were no split zone heavy industry sites in, uh, in what became the coastal zone. Denrec, a few years ago, in giving approval to a sewage treatment plant in the coastal zone south. Route 24 in Sussex County he made the declaration that even though the site was larger than 20 acres, the heavy industry activity within the site was all under roof, all within a building that occupied a land area less than three acres. So Denrec established a precedent okay, of splits of conceptually recognizing the difference between a portion of the site that's a heavy industry use and, and the rest of the site that is light industry. The precedent exists. Then didn't have to do it that way, but that's the decision that they made. And then, having made that decision, they can't deny equal treatment any other that. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. I'm an engineer. What had happened some time ago if it was anything else? So what is taking so long for the five hundred thousand dollars for this study? This will change not only Wilmington but the entire state of Delaware. So it's time that we, the elected officials, do what needs to be done so that you, the union folks, can get the job that you need and the city can change. Thank you. Thing was trying to get the five hundred thousand dollars, and I want Tom to speak to this, and that is, why don't these big investors invest the five hundred thousand dollars? Why does it have to come from government? And that was one of the questions I had. Tom gave an answer. So with that, uh, I pledged uh, to go back to City Council as the president and to honor seven votes so we can get this passed and get one hundred fifty thousand dollars. And of course, we have to. Well, an environmental report done by the investors will not have the credibility that's needed. It has to be done by an independent. Closest thing is, uh, you know, a state or county or somebody being involved in Do we have any representatives from Coons' office and uh, and Carpers? And what are your comments? I'm Andrew Ginsburg from Senator Coons' office. Um, and I think uh, Senator Coons' position is pretty similar to John, John Carney's position. Uh, I think his position, uh, Senator Coon's office, uh, uh, um, office position is pretty similar to the Congressman Cardi's, and I think his position, since uh, you all met with him back in November, is uh, pretty much the same. If this is a viable project, uh, and if you don't need any uh, 
putting in the government money for this, and this is going to be run on its own. Uh, and the, you can get all the permitting done and all the environmental work done. Uh, I think generally he supports this. Um, in the past, Senator Kuhn says uh, we're pretty hard on uh, maintaining the birth for your members at the Port of Wilmington to get two dredges uh, done a year, our mains trust fund, uh, main channel deepening, operation maintenance, Coast Guard uh, made its navigation budget strong so that your members at the Port of Wilmington and other ally members uh, can have uh, jobs. Is that all you have to say? <laughs> well, that's it? What, what, else, what other questions do you have? Now, she, the, the, the gentleman asked what was your position on, on, the, on the project. And I think Senator Kuhn's and position, what he told you last November, is stayed the same. <laughs> if, uh, if, if this is a viable project. If, if, if it's a viable project? If it's a viable project, you get through all the paperwork and all the permitting, uh, and you have investors lined up, great. Uh, okay. Right. Just, just, just so, just so you and I know, when we met in November, you and Mr. Zindi were going to give us a lot more information that Senator Kuhn's asked for. We haven't seen anything since then. Yeah, uh, I've, unless your email has changed, I've sent you everything. Everything we've done, all the position documents. I sent you the study that that we have outside today. You've had privilege to all the information. Okay. Well, the page on the new document you gave us says you don't need any government money. Yeah, okay. Someone from 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 um, Carpers. Carpers, is Bonnie is Bonnie still here? Yeah. I just want to make okay. one comment. I um I'm taking to a martyr as you all know. And the point is in my district and and with my uh, able colleague we're co chairing a committee that's reporting back to the state in our, in January on the feasibility of the port. And we're so encouraged by the support we've heard from the city and the county. And so our charge is to go back to the governor and ask him to finance some more money. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you know, I, 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 gotta, I gotta make this comment. And um, in reference to something you said, Harris, about money. I sat, I sat in a DDO, Delaware Economic Development Organization Finance Committee meeting. And I watched DDO give Wells Fargo, I think it's $2.8 million to move a hundred dollars from Baltimore to here. I watched DDO, and, I, and at the budget hearing, I watched $7.5 million be set aside for a center of in Middletown, a data center in Middletown. So don't tell me that you strapped when it comes to talking about this project, because I've seen Debo give two point eight million dollars to Quota for 45, 42 jobs. So I've seen Dito give, I don't know how many millions of dollars to these projects, and no one said, show me the money when they came. In fact, the state yeah. gave them money. Yeah, no, and so yeah. Andrew, in terms of your question, once you got us, we didn't need, we need seed money just like everybody else need to see money to bring investors here. Why do you tell me this crap about the state doesn't have money? Because the state has money for its friends and its rich friends that it finds money for. Dito has money to do this. We give them money. We don't put strings on it. We give them money. Exactly. That's why I know the money's there. Don't tell us then you strapped. When we ask for five hundred thousand dollars, that's going to create tens of thousands of jobs. And I see these people talking about forty and fifty jobs get a million plus. So just, just to be clear, what, what are you looking for from us? I'm serious. Because it sounds like you've got, it sounds like you've got five hundred thousand dollars already. Where, where, where would you, where, where would you hear that? Where did you hear that from? That we got five hundred thousand dollars already? If the city does one hundred fifty. You heard the county's going to do 250, and you heard ILA's going to do 200. That's, so, no, 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 that, that's because yeah. ILA is not keeping up. It's not going to our understanding. Now, what you, should, what you should be saying, okay, Kamoko, the Summers Love is going to try to do what we can to raise you A, B, and C. So, 
that's what you should be saying if you truly are concerned about creating jobs and doing what you can to make jobs happen. So, you know, you. The, 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 the Tiger Grant that we got for the Port of Wilmington. Uh, I'm not talking about the Tiger Grant for the Port of Wilmington. We're talking about this project right here. Where do you think this we, project. Where do you think we can find better? Find it. See, when we play a season decision, we ask them for those who rally behind us in a weak position to follow that seed of dissension. Okay? And that seed of dissension should not work anymore. We should not be on a begging mission. We should be on an we should be on venturing the vote mission of duality. We should now say to the people, the lives of our and the futures of our children lies to depend on this. And so we are tired. We should have a special investigation to investigate you. All of y'all don't want this for these people. That's the whole point. So it's it's just BS. You know, everything we, we, it's, it's laid it out. It's so factual and clear today that this is necessary. And then we come up and we talk about nine years and you get money. And the brother just said, you get, you can go, you can give money to dog parks. You give money to skate rings. You give money to drug rehabs down in Dover. You can't give $500,000. That's an insult. That's an insult. So, also, yeah, also, yeah, yeah, brother Mark. Also, um, we know that the Coons people have been to the environmentalists telling them to stop this project because they're going that project's gonna destroy the river. We know you've been doing that. We know you've been doing that. You've been to the environmentalists because we got environmentalist friends that tell us that you have you guys have been there telling them you gotta stop this project because those people are gonna destroy the river. Who is it and is he is he present to them? Because we need to start calling spades and spades and bring them out so that from a political perspective they eat they don't eat off the table anymore. That's that way that way is bleeding. Working people on product are bleeding because there's no jobs. Price is gone, Jim's gone, Avon's gone. Delaware City jobs are gone. People, families are bleeding. We need jobs, blue collar jobs. We need to put our people back to work. Then you wonder about the crime that's out here because you got kids, 30, 40% of kids that wake up in work and don't have a job to go to, you're going to have problems. And we get this court, we'll put, we'll clean them corners up. We'll put those people to work. We'll take care of those families that got that work or are destitute because Christ and Jim lost their family. I've got a mother, a mother two weeks ago who seen me on television said, um, Mr. Kamal, I seen you on television. She said, my, my husband and my son worked at Chrysler, and now they're working these jobs, and we, we are struggling for our bills. Our people are bleeding, and we need this project. And just get started on it. And if Senator down, he can help you get seed money to get that started and phase it in. You know, farmers go in debt for 40 million years to buy a farm. Uh, and, and it takes us probably that 40 and maybe 42 or 45 to pay for it. So, somehow or another, this seed money, and then I, do, do some of your stockbrokers and some of your um, investment people on Wall Street? Five hundred thousand is chunky, and I, you can't let a nickel hold up the court. So I just think you're well said, Gary. Well said. Thank you. Uh, let me say this because I have to tell you. It's fine. It's really good to me, and I love it. The, the passion that Kamoko has because he's just down the truth. If we had these jobs, we would not have crime we have in the state of Delaware. And it makes no sense to me when I hear from my senator's office that. They're just thinking about this or that. No, the thinking is over. Either you're gonna do it or not. You're not thinking when you need a vote. When you need a vote, you say, come vote for us. We have to be smarter here, and I didn't wanna bring politics in. But now we have to do it. You know, because either they're in or they're out. So pull everybody, I'm in right here. Either they're in or they're out. We're gonna get this money. Like Ash said, we're gonna get this done regardless of the issue, because guess what? It has to be done. The same with John Carney, he was here. And Senator, you know I agree with you, and we've been working on a lot, and you do a lot of great jobs. This is not a 10-year project. This is a project that's gonna have to happen right now. We cannot wait. 
Right. We cannot wait. So I want everybody, we're going to stand together. We're going to get this done. Right. Senator, and I know sometimes we say some things, and I know you're on board because you are very helpful with the 200000 We have to do this right now. We can't wait. So yeah. keep the passion. Keep I know believing. Harris. Harris is with us. I know Harris Keep believing. Do Harris. not let, you know, my motto is believe you can and you will. Don't let that get in your spirit. We're going to get this done because we have to. Oh All right, we got to get out of this room. Andrew, come on, say what you gotta say. Just one more thing. Uh, the gentleman from the court of left, the, the main reason they were here today was we invited them to come. Uh, we didn't think there'd be any good, sufficient contact and dialogue about this project between, uh, about this project and Corey yet. I don't know how much Mr. Zinni has talked to the Philadelphia district, maybe folks in DC, but we decided uh, it'd be good for them to come here to hear about the project, get it on the radar screen. And so I don't, I don't want you to think that um, we're not trying to bring anything to the table. Um, we think that this is a good first step one of the reasons why Senator Coons is on appropriations, energy, and water is only to maintain the dredging to the project. Uh, and what, we've had conversations as well about the 45 foot channel and how 45 foot doesn't do much for Delaware uh, and try to nudge uh, nudge the state on, on the river as well. We know that 45 foot uh, is going to eventually come and go and it's going to just be ships passing us by on the way to Philadelphia uh, unless we do something about it. Uh, and I think, I think, at the end of the day, I think you and Bill have to look at that. Uh, We've done a whole lot of work to try to make sure that the port is uh, is good and viable to preserve jobs for your existing ILA members, uh, and there's no reason why we wouldn't be supportive of expanding your membership in Delaware. I need to ask you a question. Yeah. Were you one of the people who called and said that we were going to destroy the port? I was not. You was not? I was not. Then second, second of all, the other thing that you had mentioned about, if you think that is, this is viable, would you, in front of all these people today, make a commitment for them? I'm not going to make a commitment to the senator without oh, saying a little okay. bit more information. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. We got a couple more minutes because we're going to add it to the uh, page. Do you have something to anyone else? Anything else? Anybody else? Okay. I want to thank everyone for coming. We have the signing sheet, and we will be contacting you later on because, as we say, this is a coalition that's trying to. Make this happen, make this court real. Because we need this court like we need more.